happening. <laughs> turn that on. Uh, calling tonight's meeting back to order for Thursday, January 23rd for the school board's business agenda. Um, just had a great workshop, so sorry for the delay on um, our reorganizing the room. Um, we do have a couple adjustments to tonight's agenda as folks are coming in. Yeah, it is. No, I think no, people no, no. are still coming in, but thank you. <laughs> Um, there are a couple of adjustments to tonight's agenda. Um, the first, I just wanted to draw attention. We had three major items on tonight's agenda, and in order to have very targeted conversation, um, we did break public comment into three pieces. Um, so you'll notice that as we get down to 5.0, it will be um, business on the steering committee decision. When we get into the pre-K task force, there'll be a public comment section for that and then a public comment section prior to our going into the executive session tonight. Um, we do want to start tonight with athletic recognitions. And if I could ask Michael Gage to go to the podium, please. Yes, thank you very much. I'm really pleased to introduce to the board and get recognized some very special folks. Um, this year, with the 2020 year coming, the Portland Press Herald, along with its affiliate newspapers, the, the Forecaster, and some of those smaller newspapers, decided to do um, a kind of a decade in review. And one of the things that the sports editor for the Forecaster decided to do was an athletic recognition. And so how it was done was there's a southern forecaster and a northern forecaster. So for the southern region and northern region, they picked two athletes from each school to be athletes of the decade. Uh, just a tremendous honor. And they picked two coaches um, from actually each region, not each school. So there's two coach, southern coaches and two northern coaches. And we were fortunate to have both um, both Scarborough coaches be recognized on the Southern um, edition of, of the Forecaster. Um, another tremendous honor. So I told them that they didn't have to speak tonight. I told them they could just be here. So, um, but hopefully we can get people to come up and take a picture. But for right now, um, I'll just have them stand and be recognized. Um, Bella Dickinson, Jarrett Flaker. And for our coaches, Tom Griffin and Coach Derek Veyu. And before they leave, I'm going to get them to get a picture, but I think Representative Baybine, is he? Okay. So Representative Baybine does have some sentiments from um, the legislature um, for these folks' accomplishments. And um, I'm not sure if he's coming later today or we'll, we'll get, certainly get those. So perhaps we could have Coach Griffin and Coach Veyu and Bell and Jarrett come up and any of the school board members and assistant superintendent would like to join in that picture, that would be great.
come with me, you might have to. Come with me, you might have to get scooch down the front. All right, thanks. While they're up there, if you can hold on a minute, I also want to recognize Coach Veyu for another special honor. He was just recently named the National Federation of High School Associations 2018-19 National Boys Outdoor Track Coach of the Year. It's tremendous. <laughs> That's another tremendous honor for Coach Fayu as well. It's just it's a that's a big a big deal in our athletic world. So congratulations to all of you. Welcome to stay, but if you want to go home to study for midterms, we completely understand. Midterms. And that goes for our student representatives too. If you guys need to leave to study. Yes. I like procrastinating. That's true. It's a nice study break. All right. That's awesome. Okay, um, moving on, we have a our spotlight award winner. So this month's um, Spotlight Award winner is Meredith Swartzendruber. She is a middle school science teacher, and I had the esteemed pleasure of visiting her um, in her classroom and after school, um, and I got to meet her students, and I got to see firsthand um, the excitement and the energy and the just joy that she brings to her students. Um, and so without further ado, so horrible with this. Oh. Okay, with a little ado. I am Michael Crosby, eighth grade teacher at the middle school, and I have nominated Miss Meredith Schwarzendruber for the Spotlight Award of the month. She is an energetic person who's come to the middle school over the last couple of years and has really brought uh, a refreshing sense of enthusiasm. Last year, she uh, inaugurated a weather balloon uh, for the kids to see and worked with the University of Maine and Orono for that. Uh, activity. Uh, this year she started the Science Olympiads, um, which is getting kids to compete uh, in science, much like the math team does at the middle school. There were only four other middle schools in the state doing that, so to have that um, activity here for our kids to extend their learning has been amazing for us. Um, and she's a great pleasure to work with. Can't thank her enough for being here every day. She's a great teammate, uh, as well as the other four I have here too. So, congratulations, Meredith. Meredith has done a great job, really incorporating science into our uh, students' lives. Every Friday, she uh, wears her flight suit, the Flight Suit Friday, 
She has done weather balloons and had kids tracked in weather balloons and really get some real life experiences. She's getting involved with the uh, Science Olympiads and bringing all kinds of kids from all different grade levels um, into her classroom every week to uh, discuss science. I wouldn't be surprised in several years you hear about some of these students getting involved with NASA or some kind of scientific experiments and it will all tie back to Meredith. She is really inspiring students uh, at a level that I haven't seen. She's amazing. What a gift to our school system. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> not here at SMS. <laughs> Meredith is well known for flying <coughs> to Fridays in the 8th grade learning community. On these Fridays, students are exposed to activities that connect space concepts to their current science learning. Meredith's passion for space is evident in her bringing space-based activities to her, our students. Students have used a Mars map and robots to deliver packages. They have designed experiments for high altitude balloon launches and this spring, SMS will host its very first Space Day next term. is really inspiring because she's always been very dedicated to space travel and she's stuck with that through her whole life pretty much and so that inspires me to continue with what I enjoy doing. Miss Swartzendruber inspires me because she's always very kind and she makes class fun and she's always supportive of my puns. Here's a pun. The way astronauts go to the bathroom in space is NASA tea. <laughs> <laughs> Science is my favorite. Um, my favorite topic in school, and it's a nice extra curricular because I don't. I'm not a big on the sports and stuff, but it's nice to do because you can research the um, things you like. Like you could do building activities, you could do forensic activities, um, you could do like water quality where you're testing um, the salt levels of the water. And Miss Whitsonjuber is an overall awesome teacher. So it's just a fun environment. Um, I joined because I really didn't have anything to do. I wasn't part of any clubs. I wasn't doing sports because sports ended for me. And science is one of my favorite things to be going to learn about. And I'm pretty good at it, so. I thought it would be a good chance to learn some more advanced things. Awesome. And do you have anything you want to say about Mrs. Sports and Gilbert? Uh, she's a great teacher and she makes class a lot of fun. <laughs> So admittedly, um, we have a mug and a certificate, neither of which are here, but I did get play packs for the boys because I knew oh. they would be here. Ha, 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 ha.
All right, um, moving on. For new business, I'd like to take 4.1, the meeting minutes of December 5th, 2019, and 4.2, the meeting minutes of December 19th, as one motion to accept as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. 4.3, um, appointments. 4.3.1, the Jim Dandy's instructor. And I don't have a name, I apologize. Um, I left my packet sitting at home mm -hmm. on the kitchen table. I don't know if anyone else has the person's name. Thank you, Kelly. Appreciate that. Okay, thank you. All right, um, and that's a booster funded um, position for Valerie Raza. Motion to approve as presented. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Great, thank you. 4.4 um, and 4.5 would be taken together as well, and these are donations. And I have something from Kate Memo, uh, Kate Bolton's memo. We have received two generous donations of $500 each to the school nutrition program. The first is from Amy Steroy and Tracy Palm, Scarborough residents, who wish to offer assistance to our less fortunate families with their donation by allowing us to pay off deficit balance and student meal accounts. The second is from Ava Adams through her family trust and is given to support our backpack program, which is currently providing weekly meal deliveries to 13 families and approximately 35 deliveries over the school breaks. We respectfully request that the school board approve acceptance of these donations with our thanks. So moved. Second. A huge thank you for these donations. This means so much to the district. Um, the generosity is so very much appreciated. All those in favor? Excellent, thank you. Okay, public comment on the agenda item 6.0. A motion to approve the SPS Building Steering Committee's recommendation of a consolidated primary school. Is there anybody that would like to speak to this item? If you could come to the podium, just state your name and address, please. Oh, yes, and um, we have about three minutes for the comments. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alex Weber. I live at 11 Serenity Drive. Uh, I'm here tonight to speak on the uh, proposal to consolidate the primary schools. Uh, this is my second time attending. I attended my first hearing recently, try to learn more about it. Uh, the more independent research that I did, uh, and also for maybe my own personal reasons, I just felt personally um, I would prefer a to either renovate the existing schools or to renovate the existing schools plus a fourth school. Um, as someone who's personally affected by this with a six month old who will be directly impacted, uh, that's just how I personally feel. Uh, that being said, I have no illusions that, uh, I, it's my understanding that this should pass pretty easily this evening and so I urge the board to make two recommendations along with this vote tonight. Um, and these two recommendations really, in my opinion, go hand in hand. I understand that they may be outside the purview of what the board does. That is, once it goes to the town council, uh, it's really in their court. However, I still think that the board carries a lot of weight with what it can recommend when it passes this proposal. Uh, first, I, I guess I urge the board to really recommend where they plan to consolidate and build this school. I, I think it's putting the cart before the horse where we are having this discussion about consolidating without understanding the logistics, how it impacts everyone in the town. Uh, it just seems uh, like an incomplete discussion. Now I've heard the preference is going to be Oak Hill uh, and if that's the case, let's be transparent about that. Let's put that in the recommendation. Um, and I really think that if we wanna invite public discourse we can't have meaningful public discourse unless we have meaningful details, and that is a big detail, location. 
Uh, secondly, I urge the board to recommend to preserve the existing three schools in some community uh, facility capacity. Uh, I think, again, it's difficult to talk about what we're gaining here with the consolidated school without recognizing what would we potentially be losing. And what are we losing is three valuable community resources that serve different areas of this town, um, whether it be as playgrounds and meeting places or community centers. These are all vital functions that the schools serve. Um, and so I, I hope that the board can not only acknowledge the importance of the existing schools, but you know, in my opinion, we're only in this situation because of growth. And I don't think the answer to growth is fewer resources. In fact, I think more resources, which is why I'm in favor of four uh, or the fourth school, which uh, does not seem to be a proposal. Uh, in any case, I just wanted to come and uh, urge the board to make these recommendations. I, I believe in the public input. I, I don't believe that we can have that unless we have full details and recommendations from the board. So I don't know how that would recommendation would come about. Um, I don't know if that's part of the motion or how someone could make that motion, but I would hope that somebody here could make the motion to not only name a recommended site, because obviously it's been discussed, but also to urge the town council to, rather than dispose of these existing facilities um, when they consolidate, to preserve them as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. You. Any other comments? Okay. Seeing none, we'll close public comments on that item. Moving to 6.1, is there a recommendation? Um, well, a motion maybe? Yes. Okay, so um, I move to endorse the building steering committee's recommendation to design and construct a single consolidated school to replace our three current primary schools in order to address both the projected enrollment growth and the aging facilities while planning for the future needs of our district. So it's uh, moving to endorse the building steering committee's recommendation, and the, that recommendation is <coughs> to design and construct a single consolidated school to replace our three current primary schools in order to address both the projected enrollment growth and the aging facilities while planning for the future needs of our districts. Is there a second? Second. And open this up for discussion. I'll start if nobody <laughs> wants to. Um, I have struggled tremendously with how I feel about it. And I think at the end of the day, for me, I tend to agree with the community member who just spoke. I don't feel like I have enough information to know for sure that a consolidated building is the right direction. I, I wish we had some financial information to back up the ex our, what we seem to be working with the assumption that renovations are too expensive, but I'm not sure we've seen enough to back that up for me to feel really sure about it because this is a huge, huge choice to close these schools. And I guess that's that anyway. I have a question. Um, the RFQ that we that is out currently, uh, this is a question for Alicia and Hillary, I think, is for consolidation and renovation plus for, so. It's for either or. It's for either or. Okay, so what is the impact of, you know, if we approve, if this passes tonight, what's the impact of just doing both of those in parallel? to investigate both those options in parallel? They have been investigated already. I mean, continuing down that path, I guess. Well, I mean, I think that that work has been done. Uh, uh, um, and we're at a point in order, from my perspective, and I think from the, the building steering committee's perspective, I think that in, the next step is that we need to 
choose an architect and start to go down one of those paths. And so, you know, we've, we, um, the prior school boards did a lot of that work and engaged Harriman um, to, to research all of those different options, programming um, and cost effectiveness. And it was delayed only because then they sought out to determine whether they would be qualified to get state funding. And so they just pressed pause for a little while. And then um, when it was determined that, you know, it became clear from the state that we wouldn't qualify, um, that's when Long Range Planning Committee re reinitiated and then for formed the Building Steering Committee. So the Building Steering Committee took a look again at those numbers and um, brought Harriman back to, to discuss to discuss that. And so at this point, it's like, you know, we've got to pick in order to move forward. So we do have to pick. We can't do them both just a little bit further. I'm not aware of, I'm not aware of anything else that could be done other than hiring, uh, I guess, a third party to do what's already been done to get the numbers again. I, I think for me, one of the challenges throughout this process has been, and, and, and I'll echo a, a, a bit of the personal part of it first. I mean, I, I went to Eight Corners and I live very close to Pleasant Hill, so these schools are very near and dear to me, both in my present and past life here in Scarborough. But as I look through this, the biggest challenge for me was not that a lot of this work hadn't been done, but that it was in so many different places. I mean, we had some of it from a 2017 master plan. Um, I've sat in on some of the building steering committees, and they've done a lot of work and a lot of discussions, a lot of design uh, to kind of stitch some new pieces in. Their charge from the Long Range Planning Committee really was at the heart to fill in the blanks and bring the work from 2017 up to, to current standard. I feel like a lot of that has been done. And, and I find myself kind of arriving at this place, and, and I had to get my head around it, so I kind of wrote down a bunch of notes because I had to kind of stitch all this together like all of you have. And um, what it really comes down to is, and it's not just about money, but renovating the three schools we have on paper is more expensive than building a school. And that is $2,017, but you can take you know, an average index increase of about 17% for three years and arrive at new numbers that still bring you to the same conclusion. And the piece that's missing is the additional cost of building a fourth school because we now know something that we didn't know then, and that is that renovating the three schools that we have isn't enough. That option doesn't bring us to the capacity we need to be at to prepare for enrollment over the next 10 years, which means we have to add additional money on top of renovating the three schools we have, because of course we want our three schools, should they stay online, to be equitable to a brand new school. Uh, we don't want part of our town fighting over a brand new facility while three are, are making do with older ones. Um, that no matter what we do to them, we'll have limitations as far as their class sizes, um, some of the structural realities that are part of 60-year-old construction. So there are a lot of unanswered questions, but I find myself coming back to a place of no matter what project you undertake, what process you undertake, there are always more questions you could ask. There's always one more analysis you could do. There's always one more person you could ask. But at some point, you have to decide, when do I have enough information to know when I can move the peg from the first to the second hole? Because that's really where we are in this. We're making the very first in a series of many decisions having to do with transportation and phasing and a whole bunch of other things. Um, but really, it's do we, do we add a school and renovate the three we have? or do we build a new consolidated school uh, that could be designed for the unique needs of our community? Um, and, and I find myself ready to make that decision, even though I do think there are more, there's more we could do to explore it. It's a tough decision to make, but I think we're ready to take the first step. My turn. I also feel the tremendous weight of this um, decision and this responsibility that's being asked of us to shape our town and to change our town significantly. Um, I would... I would like more time. I don't think... I didn't expect to be emotional. 
Um, I don't, I am personally not at a place where I feel like I have enough information um, to move the peg. Um, and that, I would like to think that part of the reason why I was elected and part of the reason why people look to me and trust me um, is that I base my decisions on data and, um, you know, good decision making for me is centered around having a lot of well-founded data. And for me, I just feel like the opinion that renovating is going to cost more, while that may be entirely true, and I can, and 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 we're faced with an uphill battle here because if I need to be a good steward of this to the community for the next several years, um, while especially while we're in the referendum process, I need to be able to answer constituent questions. And I need to feel confident at the end of the day that when someone says to me, well, why didn't we renovate? I can say the renovation costs would have been 20% more than the cost to do a consolidated building. And at that threshold, we felt like that was not a decision that was going to be supported by the community. But honestly, I don't even know if that is a decision that would be supported by the community because we haven't asked. Like, we don't even have a threshold number or a pulse on the decision making of our community. And we have tried our darndest to get the community engaged on this. This is not for a lack of trying. This is, this is something that plagues the town and it plagues us you know, how do we drum up the right amount of community participation so that we can feel comfortable with our decisions? We're sitting in a room and one person made public comment on arguably what is going to be the biggest decision I ever make when I sit in this chair. I'm not comfortable at this point going forward into the community and saying that I was 100% sure that it, consolidation was the right choice. I don't have a question. Oh. I was just going to say, okay. you raise your hand this time. I think you should be rewarded. Oh, you don't? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, um, I feel like we actually do have data. <laughs> and for you to say that we don't is mm, a little disappointing. So, you know, and, and I guess my, my opinion is that we're at the starting line and it's going to be a really long road and we can't start driving down that road until we cross the start line and so <coughs> you know nobody is like and i agree with nick this decision is the first decision as we go down this road but it's it's by it's it's one of so many decisions and <coughs> the first of which is probably going to be where where would this be if we did a consolidated school like we can't answer that until we've decided to do a consolidated school so but but on the other hand if there is absolutely zero land in town or if there's nothing suitable there's nothing saying that this road we're going on is you can't take a right turn or a left turn to adjust what you're doing based on the question, the answers to the questions that we are now going to be able to find out. And I feel a little bit like, you know, the the biggest project we have to compare this to is Wentworth and and it's a really hard comparison because Wentworth started far beyond where we are in this process. They already knew what they were gonna build, where it was gonna go. And and you know how many students it was gonna have to have to accommodate, and so they were like three months ahead of us from where we are today. If we start and we say, okay, we we are going to pursue the path of building a consolidated school, all of these questions that we have, like where is it going to be, how many students will it hold, what will the grade levels be, what will happen to our three community sites that we currently have those are all questions that are going to be answered along that road and nobody's saying that it has to be a straight path there are so many places that this could diverge 
into something else based on what the answers are to those questions. But I want to know what the answers are to those questions. I want to know what the transportation needs are going to look like. And I want to know what the availability is for space. And I want to know what, you know, and I want to discuss what grades should go to this school. And that can't happen if we're not even willing to make that very first step of saying, like, this is something that we want to explore. And, and it always, it always makes me very nervous when people say, I'm not 100% sure. Because I like to have data and I like to make my decisions based on that. But if I waited till I was 100% sure about everything that I made a decision on, I would never make a decision. I wouldn't be able to get out of my own way. And I feel like that might be where we are. And just to expand on that a little bit, we were having a discussion about this in long range planning a little bit. It's, it, I feel like we're in the place where we have to interrupt the cycle because we have this, this cycle of questioning where it's like, well, do we want to build a new school or renovate the ones we have? Well, what grades will be in it? Well, we don't know that until we decide if we want to build a new school, but then what grades will we put in it? And I'm just using those two questions as examples, but we have several of those cycles going on, and I feel like committing to exploring one of these avenues completely and, and committing to that like Hillary said, and, and unless we have to take a left or a right turn, or, or as they say, in, you know, and I, I, I like Broadway, as everyone knows, uh, if you're on the wrong road, turn back. And it's never too late to do that. And if we discover that at some point, we can turn back. But I do think we have to, at some point, decide we're going to throw an arm out and interrupt that cycle of questioning, because otherwise it just, it just spins. And it's the only way to break out of a cycle is to pull out of it. Mm -hmm. This is where I think that committee work is difficult. Um, so, you know, there's this building steering committee is made up of experts in the field and a teacher and um, our three primary school administrators and the superintendent and Hillary and I and, you know, we, there is data. There's strong data to support this decision and there's, um, and it's unfortunate that, um, you don't have that um, data, and I'm not sure what the breakdown is from the committee process to individual um, board members not getting the information that they need to make a decision, even if you don't agree with the committee's decision. And so um, I think that that shows, especially because we reported out to the, to the board, I think that that shows a breakdown in, in the process that I'd like to follow up with in the future to make sure that that doesn't happen with other topics because it's not fair to the community members who have devoted their time and energy and it's not fair to our resources to expend that money for these studies and then to hear that you, you're coming to this point and you don't have that information to make a decision. So I'm troubled by... I'm troubled by that, and I just ask that when we um, may be at our retreat or something, we follow up on that. Um, it's clear we need to do something, and um, the, we, we just got in fi the finance committee feedback from teachers at that great phase level that one of their biggest needs is space and it's impacting our programming. And so although a lot of our discussions are about money, because it has to be, I mean, it's about our kids and our teachers and learning and the whole reason why everybody's here. And we need to do something, it's our responsibility to do something to fix it. And that's gonna require us to buckle down and make it work. And, and it's gonna require the community to understand the necessity of it and for them to buy in at some point too and to put kids before money and to put um, kids before some of the things that are not necessities in our town because this is a necessity at this point. We've, we're building, putting on two, two portables at Eight Corners, we're putting two portables at Pleasant Hill. You know, we're gonna have, what was it, 40% of our kids of K2 by 2025 in portables? We can't keep going on like this. I mean, it's, 45%. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense financially. It doesn't make sense for programming. And it's not responsible for us. And it's not, it's not responsible for the town. And, it, and it's not sustainable. 
And so we need to do something, we need to act. And I respect the opinions of people who say, I love these schools, I'm really worried, I don't wanna lose that feeling. We need to address those concerns as we move forward. But I've got, I've got an expert report saying this is the best, the best solution moving forward. A building committee made of all of the various people that this board decided should be on it that are you know, the appropriate stakeholders including many experts who are saying, you know, this is what we need to do. I mean, and so for me, who am I to say, okay, I'm going to go against the enrollment study that has been remarkably accurate. I'm going to go against the Harriman um, study. I'm going to go against all of these, this diverse group that we've developed as well as that includes a number of professionals. When we know we're getting this direct feedback from our teachers that we need this. And so, you know, we can press pause again moving forward if we have to. We can readjust and realign if we have to, if the community yeah. decides that learning, teaching kids is, is not a priority, then, then I guess we'll have to realign. But I mean, I can't in good conscience not move forward knowing that <clears throat> the, the state of affairs, it's, it's dire in, in, from my perspective. So I'd like to clarify just um, I didn't mean to imply we don't have any data um, and so if I said that I apologize um, I was I am specifically speaking to the fact that we don't have renovation numbers that is a particular data set that I think is important for my decision-making process and so um, I, I certainly am not undermining the reports. I am definitely not undermining the work that the committee has done. Um, I'm not even not in favor of a consolidated school. What I am asking for and kind of what I'm kind of trying to communicate here, maybe not very well, is that I would like more time. I don't feel as though the presentation from the Building Steering Committee with, combined with the availability or lack of availability of the resources that you use to guide some of your decision making has been enough for me to inform my decision. I also want to add that I think the enrollment numbers do show that we can pause a little bit on this. We're going to hit our peak enrollment at a point when the building won't even be done. So I'd rather sort of step back because that's rushing into this isn't solving the problem we have in the next two to three years. We're dealing with that no matter what we choose. Right, but our peak numbers never come down to what they are today. And we can't fit the kids we have today, just so you know. We never but go below where we are. It will never right go now. below where we are today. It doesn't, but it's <coughs> been, if I've read some of the documents correctly, and I think this goes back to, there is stuff sort of all over the place, but going back, there has been a point in time where we've had higher enrollment than even the peak that we are going to hit. And I'm not questioning. Again, I'm not, not saying. Not at K2. Well, I, I'll go back and look. Like I said, I can't. There have been a million places, but I think in 2008 and 2009, the enrollment was higher. But I will go back and check that. I agree regardless of what happened in 08 and 09, our facilities are inadequate. I don't doubt that for one second. I appreciate all the work that the steering committee has done and that message was received loud and clear. I think I'm with April, I just would like to slow down on this. I don't see the huge rush. I know you heard your hand. Oh, well, I don't know. I, I agree with Mrs. Scyther and Ms. Turner. Like. I guess the way I'm looking at it, I see two sides to it. I see like the emotional aspect behind it and this like database analytical side behind it. Because in like the emotional aspect, I feel like these schools, the way they are right now, obviously they can't stay the way they are right now, but they're in these communities that parents feel really safe sending their children there. But from like an analytical aspect of it, if we were to renovate those schools, like we don't have, like, I think they mentioned that there probably isn't space on the property to put a lot more of, like, surface area in that school. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like first graders walking up a flight of stairs is better than 30 kids in one classroom. So it's like, 
change? I, I think it's a really difficult balance. Um, like, the, I think going forward, we just have to think about, like, our job as the school board is to consider the needs of students and staff. Like, it's the number one thing listed on the school board website. And, like, parents coming <coughs> and sharing their thoughts is great. Like, community involvement is amazing. But they're not going to be attending those schools. Their students are. So student interest is what we should be considering the most. I just... I just have a question. So, if this passes like tonight, what's the next step? I know someone was saying it like went on to town council, but what is? No, like, it doesn't go okay. to town council. I can answer then, that if you want. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so right now we have um, we had voted in December, if you remember, to actually put out the mm -hmm. RFQ, which is a request for qualifications, and we have a lot of. Um, um, respondents to that mm -hmm. um, and the way it stands now we put out the RFQ that kind of said we're basically we're doing a project in Scarborough um, and we don't really know what it's going to look like yet but um, you know give us your qualifications for a project of this type it could be a renovation or it could be a large building so those people have responded and then and um, the next step would be that if we know which direction we're going in when we um, go through those applications and start interviewing those firms, we'll be able to ask some more specific questions about um, this, the specific type of project that we're going to do so that we'll be able to like pinpoint our interviews a little bit more. Um, and then uh, once we narrow that down, the, the next step is that we would contract with one of those firms to um, guide us for the next year. They would... Um, they would start doing a lot of that work that we've been talking about and answering those questions. So they would work together with the steering committee. There would be a much larger building committee that would be formed um, that would then be able to break off into like subcommittees that would um, specifically look at land and specifically look at design and then specifically look at playgrounds. I mean, there's like, you know, everything. Um, so that's like where, those are like the next few steps um, but the hiring that firm is going to really help us be able to um, get the answers to a lot of the not secondary, but a lot of those big questions that um, we still so like are this asking. So, like, would need to pass tonight in order to hire the firm. Is that correct? N no. Okay. That is not correct. Okay. What was your question, Kristen? Does it need to pass? Do we need to? Do we need to? pass the motion tonight to, to, in order to hire that firm. Um, no, but it would be able to target what we are asking of that firm. Um, I just have a couple thoughts. So I often sit up here and feel incredibly inadequate with all the educational experience that is up here. And as a program manager, I don't have any of that. But I think what I'm often faced with in my job is making difficult and uncomfortable decisions at a critical juncture. And I think this is a critical juncture. Um, it is uncomfortable because I agree with you, April. We don't have a lot of the answers. And I think the community feedback that we have heard, and I always wish that we hear more, but I, I think we did get a, a, a lot of responses in public comment and over email. Um, and even the points that Alex was making tonight was just about answers that, that they want that will come down the road. But in order to answer those questions, we have to make a decision. We have to give some direction. We have to take this first step. And it's uncomfortable, but as leaders of this town, of elected officials, we have to make uncomfortable decisions. We can't just keep going around in a circle. And I think it's incumbent upon us to make sure that we're taking the feedback and the concerns of the community um, is, is are saying and incorporating that into our community, our committee and subcommittee process, like Hillary said, and into our programming space. Um, and I think at our last workshop, I raised a concern about exactly what you said, like we don't have these numbers about what it would take for a, a renovation for the school. But as I thought about it more, one, I trust the, uh, the opinion of the experts when they say it's going to be more expensive, but two, the, fin the finances 
are a huge component, but it's not the only component. And I think when you think of every other factor, whether it's the operational budget, the programming, equity, the consolidated school just makes more sense. And so while we, while I agree that it would be nice to have that number to help with our community conversations, it is one factor of many, many factors, and on all those other factors, I think the consolidated option is, is the most sensible option at this point, and I feel comfortable supporting this knowing that if at any point we feel like this is going in the wrong direction, that we pull back because we can rush this. If No, no one wants to rush this. We want to get this right. Um, and so if, if we're not feeling comfortable, if we're getting overwhelming feedback to the community that they're not feeling comfortable about it, then I think we either change our communi communication strategy or we pause and just maybe go in a different direction. That's my and sorry, the final thing I'll say is the community does get an opinion, and their ultimate opinion is their vote. So, Can I ask a question of you and Hillary? When you were... Um, when this was talked about sort of the first round before um, state funding was sought by the prior board, was there a vote on consolidation at that time? There was. Yes. And, and what was the vote at that time? Do you remember? I want to say we voted overwhelmingly towards consolidation. It was, yeah, it was a unanimous vote. Thank you. It was my very first vote. <laughs> like literally it was my first vote. Yeah, and so that so that's exactly what I mean. You you spelled it out. That's exactly what happened. The vote was to go with a consolidated option, and um, but we didn't want to um, ignore state funding if we were eligible for it. Obviously, um, and that process takes a really long time, like over a year. So that at that at that meeting that started. Um, the administration and going through the process for finding out if we were eligible for state funding and that includes like like um, you have to submit for stuff they come they do visits they I don't it's the whole pro anyway and as everybody knows we were we were so far down on the list that it's not it's not an option um, and so that's kind of where that time went and you know to be honest I don't think this is all about money, but that time, I mean, and I, and I don't disagree with that decision because I feel like we absolutely needed to know if we were eligible for state funding. Um, but every, that year or year and a half, that costs us probably millions of dollars in time lost because now construction costs are that much more expensive. Thank you. <coughs> Can I just add one more thing? And I know... Of course. I know that the conversation is going to happen somewhere down the line afterwards, but I think another huge thing for me that makes me really uncomfortable is there's no guarantee in voting to consolidate the K-2 schools that we're addressing our middle school problem. And to me, that's a big problem. This enrollment bubble is heading that way. That's a school that's already a third of that school is in portables. So I, I worry that we are going to just move forward, and that's going to get overlooked somewhere down the line. I know we're, in our heads we're all thinking, well, sure, we'll, we'll move sixth grade down, and that will solve that. But I think I would like more assurances and more solid, I don't know, just more knowledge that we are going to address that problem as well. So there was an amendment to the building steering committee's recommendation which included expanding the scope to look at it more globally mm -hmm. could we amend the motion to also support that because I agree with you I think that I thought that was part of the the building steering committee's recommendation it was like a an addendum to their recommendation um, I mean I will say like I don't want to overstep because Nick's the chair but that is a discussion that we've had already in long-range planning to start looking at that um, but it's not something that we feel like we can do without getting a lot of um, uh, information and um, information from our teachers and staff who are actually at those levels um, so that's a big that's a big project 
that we've already started discussing on, and how to get that information and how to receive the feedback. Yeah, and I guess that's my concern is that we're going to try and solve one problem and this other one sitting over there independent of what we're talking about and I, I think they need to happen together. We can make a motion to amend the motion that Hillary has, or like a friendly amendment, um, in order to increase the scope of what our approval is. Um, and I know I just sort of jumped in on you, April, I apologize. Okay. Um, I would say that maybe one of the biggest things that I've, I'm hearing through this, and again, as an analyst, I need to see data. I, I have to weigh everything out. I have to do my process flows before I say, okay, this is how I'm going to consolidate four new objects. Um, so work does come into play with this, much like Sarah had mentioned. I think the biggest thing that I'm taking from this is a communication piece. Um, whether it was making a different choice to maybe not go to the meetings I was already at on Mondays to attend more of these to be as in-depth knowledge-based as Hillary and Alicia are, as the committee is. Um, They've put a ton of hours in this. You've lived it, you've breathed it, you've had these conversations. We're coming in way up here to where you are, and it's really hard to get to that same level of knowledge and understanding that you have. Um, so it's not an undermining, it's not a lack of trust, it's a, I'm trying to get my head wrapped around all of this that you've had far longer to get to that point. Um, we also need to do a better job communicating with our staff a better job communicating with our public so that they're more comfortable with where this is. And I think moving forward, no matter how this vote goes, we need to make a concerted effort to have more communication outreach on this project. We are going to be wholly reliant upon the voters to approve this, and it is going to be a substantial amount of money. I look at what just came down with Gorham and all the work their committee did, and they didn't even get to referendum. I want us to be successful to get through this process. I want us to be successful and have a yes vote, a solid yes from this community, backing what our teachers are asking for and backing what is in the best interest of our students. With Adam, you can see you back to April. <clears throat> so I, my biggest question, I guess, at this point is just, and, and this is a genuine question, what, what do we have to lose by putting off the vote tonight, or what do we have to gain by voting tonight? Well, I can tell you that we've lost millions of dollars by waiting, and the kids have suffered in their programming space. I'm not asking and for years. I'm talking a few more weeks. I'm talking a couple more workshops. I, I, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a question. It's frustrating to me because I'm not sure what else can be provided that isn't already out there that that wasn't wasn't known about before today I and um, I'm, I'm not sure how to get that information to people that don't have it I, I agree with that only because we do have numbers for renovation and if we do another workshop it, it's not going to give you the more accurate numbers for renovation or different uh, I don't even I understand don't know. how the process works you guys like this is how separated I am from the work that you've done when you say to me that we can't have a proposal for what the renovations are I don't even know I, why why I, I, I don't know enough to even know why asking for renovation numbers is or isn't an appropriate ask so is your request for two weeks so that you can ask questions that could have been asked. I mean, these are all things that I just don't understand why we haven't done them before. If you have legitimate questions and this has been on the agenda, the information has been circulated, there's a committee that's been formed, why is, no, why is nobody seeking this information prior to today? I will definitely own that and I have struggled with where in this process was the appropriate place to ask some of my questions um, but I think really digging into it and really looking at a lot of stuff in preparation to vote so much more came up and I think I would benefit a lot from another workshop and ask all these questions and 
hopefully that's all it would take and we would be where you are. I'd like to move the previous question. Well, I think, wait, what is what? that? What? To, oh, you want to, to vote, vote on I want to vote. Oh. Okay, so you're done with conversation. Well, I, don't I, think, I didn't really get an answer to April's question. On the I think we have to ask, act on my motion. There hasn't been a second on that motion. Wait, I need to take a vote on the underlying so, motion to approve oh, the oh, okay. You already voted. You seconded I, it. I, I just moved. No, I have to second my motion to Alicia, to just vote, to get more to information, vote. just in the interest of getting more information. Yeah, so Kristen asked a question earlier. Right, one thing I want to say. If we, like, do we have to vote on this tonight in order for us to, you guys, to select a vendor? And you said no. Right. So w I guess, is there an actual impact of delaying this two weeks. Before we move that, I think that, we, that's just a question. There's a, but there's a motion pending, and that if there either needs to be a second so that we can take a vote on Hillary's underlying motion, or or it, then we would if it's if it's not seconded, then we we'll go back to, to discussion. I don't understand the that's, procedure of that. I'm just trying to ask a more question to get more information. What? At what Alicia is doing is stopping the con asking to stop the conversation to make a vote on Hillary's recommendation. So she's looking for a second to move to motion. Oh. I I don't want to end the conversation if people have more to say. Sorry. So I can I say something you can so I feel like I instead of saying um, what I really think about the project I ended up defending myself against what against somebody else's comments so what what I originally wanted to say was that I think um, I think we have enough information I feel like I have enough information to make it a admittedly very difficult decision um, to say that I think that we we should go down the path of investigating a consolidated school and the reason is because I I see the enrollment numbers I see the cost I have talked to you know however many committee members we have who are experts who are you know 99.9% .9 sure that it's going to cost a fortune to renovate, or I mean, it's going to cost a fortune either way, but it's going to cost way more to renovate than it is going to cost to build a consolidated school. I trust in that opinion. I love Eight Corners. I love it. I love everything about it. My kids went there, all three of my kids. I still have a kid there. I understand the, the safety and feeling of those little community schools, and I, I hear the, um, the anxiety that's out there about getting rid of those little schools. Um, and, I, and I don't want to ignore that. I, I do want to take all those comments and all of those concerns and, and really use them to dig into how we can make a consolidated school into the type of place that will still give you that warm, cozy feeling and, and make kids feel really safe. Um, and I think that's possible. And there is nothing in renovation or a fourth school or any of that that convinces me that it's a better option for our kids or for our community price-wise that would I just lost my. It, nothing convinces me that, that that there is a better option than consolidation. And so, as as difficult as it is to make a decision, and as uncomfortable as it might be to understand that there are questions that aren't answered at this point, I feel like I can personally say that I want to cross the starting line and and investigate this as the. Um, primary option for our students. So I, I just want to comment on two things. One is, there's two things that were said that I want to specifically mention. One is the idea of this being a rush. 
this conversation is at least four years old, if not older. Um, and so we're not reinventing and kind of rushing to a conclusion. In fact, I'm a little bit encouraged because, and maybe this is my own ignorance, but I didn't know until tonight that there had actually been a vote on this before. I knew that it had come around before. I knew it was put off because of the question of state funding. But I didn't realize that a previous board had, had voted 7 to 0 to endorse this option. And the fact that we kind of re-engaged this entire procedure and came to the exact same conclusion, in my opinion, is actually pretty encouraging. Um, the other thing that I want to mention that's concerning me a little bit is, is committee work and the role of committee work. And I'm just going to speak for myself for a moment. I only sit on three committees. I've never sat on policy, and policies, I'm just picking on policy because I don't sit on it, um, has brought things forward, and I've read them, and I've seen, heard the hard work that's gone on, and I've been like, this seems like a good policy to me. These people worked hard on it. I trust the work they've done. I'm going to vote in favor of this because this seems to make sense. I, I didn't take that time to kind of tease it apart with a fine tooth comb. And I know that's probably not anybody's intention, but I'm sure for the folks that spend a lot of time on this committee, that's how it feels. And if we start going down that road as a board where each of the seven of us have to intimately understand every detail that went into every discussion of all these committees, this job is going to become very insurmountable very fast. And I'm worried about setting that precedent. I, I personally trust the work of this committee. I did sit there twice. Certainly they had more meetings than that. Um, those, the experts in the room, I agree with Hillary, are very well informed and very uh, confident in this recommendation. Uh, and their confidence and, and our wisdom in procuring them makes me ready to make a decision on this. I would still like an answer to that question. I would too. What question? The, like if we don't, if we don't vote tonight, if we delay, mm -hmm. what is the impact? And maybe we can have <coughs> David come come up and answer that question if we don't know. But I'm just curious if we don't vote tonight and we delay it, so what is the impact to the committee? So I can I can answer it a little bit, and David jump in if you have anything else to say. So <laughs> so if we delayed it to our next meeting there really isn't that much of an impact. But we already delayed it <laughs> to get more information. And we're at the same point as we are now. And I agree with Alicia in saying that if we delay it another week or two weeks, um, I, don't, I don't see how, how you, two weeks is not enough time to get additional information. It might be enough time for people to research the information we have more, but we've already delayed it twice. So I guess the answer, in my opinion, is that if we delay it a week or two weeks, it doesn't really affect the committee um, s severely. But like, when are you going to make the decision? I mean, that's I guess that's my question. And, and any more than that does, because we have to start, um, I think the RFQ What's today's date? It's tomorrow is the last day. And so after tomorrow, we will start going through all of those responses and scoring them. And from there, we move on to interviewing. Well, and that's well, but we're scoring them and interviewing them with a goal in mind. And well, so we would like to. That well, was my point. Well, to right. Piston. I mean, that's part of if we can ranking target. and picking yeah. and choosing who we're going to hire. I mean, it's a time sensitive pro process. We've expended the funds to publish this. Um, we haven't received any questions from anybody on the board um, asking for more information until tonight. Um, and so we've, we're going to interview these individuals with hopefully a goal of consolidation because this was the timeline that the board set um, and it would change the questions that we would have to ask and then if we say oops just kidding we you know we've then then we have, what we're gonna start that whole process again and publish in two newspapers whatever two weeks again and um, it, it, to me it just seems like uh, um, we're chasing our tails. Could you just go to the podium? The Thank you. Just go to the microphone. Yeah, this way you can be heard by the folks at home. <laughs> I'm David Martin. I'm on the Billing Steering Committee. Um, so 
it, yeah, in answer, I, I totally agree with what the, the responses have been so far from Hillary and Alicia, that a week or two is not going to make a huge difference in the, uh, in the overall grand scheme of things. But that said, we, um, the schedule is extremely tight right now to be able to get this to referendum by November. Extremely tight. So any, any time we lose is going to be detrimental to, to getting that uh, vote to referendum. So the sooner we have a decision, um, the sooner we are able to speak, or we're going to start the interviewing process anyway, you know, with the, whoever um, we decide to have a short list uh, of the, uh, the submitting firms that we'll be hearing about tomorrow, hopefully. Um, but to know whether we're going to go with a consolidated school or renovation scheme, that will be important to have in mind as we're you know, listening to their um, uh, presentations. The problem with, um, with waiting another week or two or whatever it may be is that we won't have, I think, that information that you guys are looking for. So from what I'm understanding, listening in the audience, it, it sounds like people are really interested in, in actual numbers that show the three renovated schools plus a fourth school would cost this much. And a consolidated school would cost this much. That specific thing wasn't um, part of the, the previous Harriman study. Um, they had enough studying um, of very similar options that we were able to extract from there what we think was a very reasonable um, idea of how much things would cost. But, and then adding our knowledge from our professional experiences, we, um, we felt very confident in saying that, this, that the three, three renovations plus new school would be significantly more expensive than one consolidated school. But, if people are thinking that we there would be enough time for somebody to get hired to do that cost analysis and um, and you know put a, together a whole cost estimate for you know in a, in a few weeks, there wouldn't be time for that. That's helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank I do you. want to address one piece. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I want to address one piece to Nick specifically. Sure. I, I understand what you're saying about the committee work. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to be very cautious that we don't at any point have anyone feel uncomfortable for asking questions. Absolutely. This is a major initiative. Mm -hmm. This is millions of dollars. And I think it is important that the board asks the hard questions, mm -hmm. they get the information to make an educated decision. That is what we were elected to do. Yes, this is gonna be a very hard one to make. There's no doubt in my mind. But it's not a lack of trust and it's not a lack of um, belief or trying to dig in or not have confidence in the work that the committee does, we cannot sit here and rubber stamp things. It is imperative that we have the ability to ask the hard questions and to make the right decisions. And I, I don't want to stifle any of those conversations if possible. Um, so again, I'm not trying to be offensive to anybody that I don't feel that you didn't do a good job because you did. I know how much work you've done. I, I just was asking for more information as were other members and I just want to make sure that everybody feels comfortable and confident enough to ask those questions. Hill? I don't think any, I don't, I mean that's one of the things that I think we as a board are, I mean, th to have these like difficult discussions in public is, is important and, and that's fine and I agree, like I don't want anyone to uh, think that they can't ask a question or shouldn't ask a question, um, but I mean, Nick does have a point. Like, the, the, if we all had to do all the work, we wouldn't be able to function. And so there is a certain amount of, and I admit, uncomfortable trust that you have to put into committees. Okay. And sometimes, you know, you have to just, you, you have to trust that they are doing all of the work that you are doing because you're not on the committee. You're doing work on another committee. And I, I don't think that that point um, is superseding the, the fact that people can't ask questions. I don't, I, don't, I don't see that at all. I think people should ask questions and, and should feel confident and, and comfortable asking questions and having discussions. But I do think that there is a certain amount of trust that you have to put into the people who are on a committee 
because we can't all do all the work. I mean, it, it is it's just a, it is what it is. We already spent too much time. <laughs> Any other discussion? Uh, I just to speak to something that Kristen had said. Um, you know, I'll own my share of not having asked questions in a workshop. I'll, I'll own my share of not having emailed or been able to attend building steering committee. The last uh, several board meetings have been anything but typical. Um, they were, uh, and this whole topic um, is difficult to talk about. Um, and so in the spirit of compromise, I am asking for a little more time to process the information that's available to me, to perhaps ask some of those questions that I haven't asked yet that are answerable. I understand that there are going to be things that I, will, I still won't have the answers for. Um, and so I would like to move to table the vote. Second. Any further discussion? Until when? You don't get to say that. You don't get to say that. Discussion? I think in thinking about, as you touched upon a little bit, the long-term goal of a successful project, part of that to the timeline of how much more time, I think I would like to talk to town council. While they don't make this decision, they're going to offer another perspective that we need to consider and we need to think about if in the long term we are going to be successful. And so this whole thing is set upon November 2020. What if we meet with them and they're like, no way. I'm not saying they're going to, but it's a possibility. So if we could wait until then. And it doesn't prevent us from starting the work though today. We have to do this work. No, and, and I agree, but it, it does alter the timeline a little bit. Uh, this is really hard for me because I was, I am supporting, would have voted yes for the consolidation tonight. However, I think there's a lot of power that can come behind a unanimous vote, and it's clear that we're not going to have that tonight. And so if we can delay it two weeks without having a significant impact, and then potentially have the outcome of a unanimous yes vote endorsement by this board, that to me is, is worth it. Um, but I guess I would just want, and I don't know what the procedural rules are about this, but I would just want some assurance that like, this would be on our next um, board agenda because- Our next board uh, agenda is next week. Two and weeks, I mean, two thing. weeks. Because I feel like I, I'm not on the committee, and I feel like I have the information that it sounds like uh, April and Kristen don't feel like they have. Right. We have two meetings each month the first and the first of Thursday. The and next week will be the 31st. It's two weeks from now. Can I? Sorry, can I ask a question. I didn't mean to interrupt you. We no, that's okay. Or, or make a statement. At, at first, I want to say that there's a town councilor on the build, building steering committee, and we have asked to meet with town council, and um, he has said that he will make that request. So, I mean, that needs to be a, a mutual discussion when they're ready. Um, but I have made that request. Um, yeah. And in terms of um, having a 7-0 a, a vote, I mean, uh, 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 there's no assurances that, that a delay is going to produce that effect. And so, I mean, I, I'm, I, don't see, I, I don't see what we're going to gain from, from waiting. Um, I, do, I don't think that the, all of the what ifs are ever going to be answered. And I think that it's been summarized quite nicely, in fact, by you, Sarah, that, that at some point we need to be responsive to the needs of our schools as, as um, Board of Education members. And I think it's, it, it, I feel like it's my responsibility to, to move on this now. I think that the, every step that has been proper has been done. I think that the information has been available. Um, and I don't think that all of those what ifs are going 
are going to be answered in the in the time in which we need them to be answered to move forward. We could do a transportation study. We could do another enrollment study. We could meet with the town councilor. We could, you know, meet with a hundred voters. We could have another public hearing. I mean, we can always have all of these what ifs. Um, and we're, there's going to be a, a, a series of um, events that are going to be uncomfortable and, and unknowns, and we're going to have to be okay with that and 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 move forward. And so, and and I'm not sure what a unanimous vote gets us either. I mean, sure, I would love it, but I'm um, I think that this this is why we have a board is to allow for some um, diverging opinions, and I'm I'm comfortable with that. I think that um, two weeks is is might be enough time for people to ask some more questions, but it's not enough time to have any more information than we already have. And so I don't I don't see how it would make a difference. Okay. <clears throat> that said, the first mo the first vote would be on the motion to table. Um, all those in favor of tabling? All those opposed? Act two, which brings us back to the original motion. Um, there was a request to amend the motion slightly to include um, additional views across all grade levels and not just focus on the primaries. Is that something that you're willing to entertain? Yep. Did you now just do I have to say the whole thing? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, I gotta wing it though. Um, so it will now read I move that we endorse the building steering committee's recommendation to design and construct a single consolidated school to replace our three current primary schools in order to address both projected enrollment growth and the aging facilities while planning for the future needs of our entire district. Does that do it? Okay. That's really good. Did you say primary? Yeah, primary schools in order to address both projected Same enrollment level. growth and the aging facilities while planning for the future of the entire district instead of just the district's youngest students. Okay, but you said primary schools don't really have that. Right, but that's because they are the only ones being replaced. <laughs> Do you want me to change it? Second. It's your motion. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I just do want to point out that this is, for those of you who might not be as comfortable, I only, I want to point out that this is a, mo a motion to endorse the recommendation. It's not a motion saying we're building a consolidated school tomorrow. So by endorsing the recommendation, it allows us to move forward and, and um, have the answers to a lot of the next step questions that um, that we're all asking. Thank you for that clarification. Sure. I think we've had plenty of conversation. Um, all those in favor? And those opposed? Thank you. Motion is passed. Okay. <clears throat> 7.0 is public comment on a motion to reinitialize the pre-K task force. Is there any public comment? So, on? No, did you no. say there's no. other comment? No, I just asked if there was public comment on um, a pre-K task force. Okay. Seeing none, um, I'd like to make a motion to reinitialize the district pre-K task force. So moved. Second. And discussion. I'll start off. I'm really excited to get this project back underway. Um, we know that not only is it an underserved population within the district, it's on docket with the legislature. I expect before long there will be mandates that will be coming um, regarding this. And I think our being prepared and working ahead of time is a, a good move for us. What's the charge of the task force? Um, it's really to explore what, how we'd be able to support um, the pre-K programming, 
keeping an eye on what's going on with legislature so that we are aware of any laws and rulings and mandates that may come down. Um, the committee was very active at one point and sort of went, I guess, silent is the best way to use it. Um, Hillary was a it went member dark. of it. It went dark. <laughs> um, this is really just it was to, a big committee, too. It, it was a really big committee. Yeah, it was district wide. Um, and this is just to get it back in the forefront. I think it'll be important to, so I had a, like, what was it, three inch, one of the giant three inch binders or whatever of, of stuff, and um, Diane has it too, and Diane inherited it from Joanne, and so I gave mine to Kristen just to, like, get everything started off, but I think it'll also be important for you guys to keep an eye on any CDS, um, for sure. like, I know that's not technically pre-K as I beat to death at the last <laughs> meeting, but um, I do think that it will that it would fall, I think it would be a good idea for it to fall under the purview of that committee, so I don't know if, um, if that's just going to happen or if you need to change some of the wording of the, um, it's getting late, of the, getting late. What is, what's the thing called? The charge. Charge. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Great. Oh, shoot. I forgot to ask. Is that, Diane, do you know if that's going to include all the same people, or are you reconvening a new committee? Or that's you know? a good question. No, I don't know. I think that's something that we'll discuss. Okay. Um, because, you know, again, I, I think the last time that committee convened was in 2017. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And so, you know, obviously there have been changes. Yeah. Back to this, so. All right. Moving on. 9.0 Public comment on the executive session that the board will be entering into. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. My name is Crystal Ash Cuthbert. I'm a fifth grade teacher here in Scarborough and I'm currently president of the Scarborough Education Association. I want to thank you for the opportunity to address the board tonight. I speak to you on behalf of our association members. Here with me tonight are the leaders of the SEA within each school that collectively represent more than 300 members. While I speak to you tonight with a singular voice, it's the voice that represents many. Scarborough staff came in mass to the last two board meetings in order for their concerns about teacher contract to be heard. Not once, but twice, they were silenced. While the teacher contract is still a pressing issue, the larger and more alarming issue is one that has come to light, and that's the board's continued refusal to listen to the voice of its employees. We are assured, we, excuse me, we were assured that this board would be different that this board would welcome and seek out <coughs> the hearing directly from its staff. In fact, several of you won seats on the promise that teacher voice would be honored and used to guide purposeful changes and decisions necessary to the continued success of Scarborough. But this board has repeatedly declined invitations to meet with SEA leadership to discuss the needs and concerns of its staff. This board has created decision-making committees without any teacher members. This board continues to support some administrators who won't work collaboratively with their members of their staff. This board appears to give little validity to the thoughts, concerns, and opinions of educators in this district when important, impactful decisions are made. The old adage, the workers know the work, is truer now than ever. And almost everybody on the board said this evening to trust the experts. Education, student needs, and the demands placed on teachers and staff are continually changing and becoming more and more complex every day. For the good of all Scarborough students, it's imperative that the board maintain a productive and respectful relationship with educators, bus drivers, custodians, food service, workers of our district. C 
Simply put, we need the board with us, not against us. And as they say on Broadway, if you're on the wrong road, turn back. I ask that you reflect on the events of the past few months and realize that if the board listens to its educators, our district will only benefit. Thank you for your time. Any other public comments tonight? I see none. I'm making a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to MRSA 40560 for the purpose of discussing the professional staff contract to return to public session for any possible action. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Oh. What? There is one other no. piece before we do go upstairs. Given the time, um, oh. completely forgot about this. Um, because of the policy that we can't take up new business after 930, I am asking for another motion before we leave that we can extend that um, to complete our work tonight. If we need it. If we need it. Okay. <laughs> if we need it. Just so moved. Try to be prepared. Second. Second. All those in favor. We'll be back.
turn the light on for us. It's so good. All right, we're back. Thank you. Um, I believe there's a motion on about to be made. So, um, yep, as a result of the executive session, I move to accept the majority recommendations of the fact finding panel for the teacher's contract. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous decision. Okay. 11.0, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Turn your mic off.